so uh, this is risk based engineering uh, and now we are discussing the prognostics and health management one of the modules of risk based engineering i would say one of the important module of uh, risk based engineering that is prognostics and health management and the lecture uh, is focusing on uncertainty assessment and management in phm uh, i'll tell you at the outset why this uh, topic is so important like any other uh, sin, uh, serious process the scientists also look at their research and development uh, uh, with a critical view point and uh, that particular uh, uh, you know uh, view uh, is uh, seeing from outside how a particular technique here it is phm and uh, what are its limitation and how those limitations can be met um, because some techniques they are very very optimistic uh, and they give results also uh, but then this angle is very important critical angle is very important to uh, see the limitation uh, why why we have to see limitation in your own research and development because future r&d will depend on that and that's how the fine tuning of any approach can be done so this lecture will be critically seeing phm its uh, uh, power we have seen all through four lectures now let us see uh, what are the its limitation and how if there are limitation if there are uncertainties uh, which some of them are looking to the level that you know they cannot be managed then probably uh, uh, we have to have some deterministic provisions so this is how the uh, uh, this is how the uh, engineering industry or complex system in industry operates so uh, so so the view from emerges from here is um, yes let us consolidate the phm uh, management technology uh, already um uh, used development or who used positive side has come out of it but then remaining uh, 10 to 15% uh, critical views also should form, form part of it. and till that time there is nothing to uh, sort of you know uh, be having a sort of okay, uh, some doubt uh, how we can use this technology why because the, uh, there are ways to handle it and that is called management so uncertainty management comes into the assessment and then management comes into the picture so uh, first let us uh, try to look at the uh, lab environment in lab environment phm would have shown really very good results uh, uh, and a uh, uh, lot of publications and okay, we can see uh, as the days are passing we are having a huge publish uh, publication on remaining useful life estimation and that is the uh, uh, net outcome of phm uh, but then you if you look at it uh, uh, apart from the one which has been done uh, uh, are operating at the site level or at, in the field most of the things they are at laboratory level so the insights and laboratory level uh, uh, situation they <coughs> allow you to assume something they allow you to cut some parameter uh, uh, or you can you can have your own operational domain uh, to prove a technology so and th then in nutshell we can say they are very provide a very controlled environment actually so only uh, validity of the uh, approach or technique will uh, will be tested it will be in the field and that's how uh, field results are considered very important uh, so uh, we have uh, now by this time even in academic circle there is a good uh, uh, there is a uh, concern uh, there is a uh, consensus uh, that phm has got uh, there is so many sources sources and uncertainty can creep in and th this has to be handled um, but uh, uh, another tool uh, which is a very uh, effective tool sensitivity analysis if we find any uncertainty or uncertain area let us do the impact of that uncertainty onto the net results so by this what we will do is we will be able to converge uh, among the major uncertainties uh, because if it is not having a, any impact so th this i am talking about at the plant level that means uh, people who are uh, dealing with the implementation of this strategy they can have a multitude of uh, level. one is built in provisions in the plant to what extent you will de depend on a particular component 
because as such redundancy, diversity and all, they, they give a lot of leverage. If one component fails, then uh, plant is not affected, other two components are there. But then our safety margin is reducing. So to that extent, we have our concern. Uh, so sensitivity analysis provides a very important tool uh, for this actually. And then, uh, so how the discussion should, should go as far as the lecture is concerned. So we will be discussing at three points. One is the sources of uncertainties then uh, treatment that is required uh, and then development of a performance matrix. So that means we will know how far we can go for implementing into the real time scenario coming out from a controlled environment or lab environment. So sources of uncertainties are concerned. Uh, okay, we can say each and every element come with the uncertainty because we know that uh, LAT uncertainty is it is inherent in the system. So we have to handle uh, uncertainty is coming from sometimes it could be on the model that we have used sometimes it is uh, the, the models we have not used because uh, the uh, because the uh, general experience is uh, that it is the in, the the way in uh, uh, in uh, in controlled environment we have one uh, failure mechanism uh, one mode or two mode or limited uh, two or three mode synergy is there but then there are, there, it can be more than uh, and there could be some unknown uh, events that will bring in the uncertainty. So the, uh, in, in uh, PHM, the major uncertainty is the uh, can be divided. So it cannot be uh, understood by epistemic or aleatory uncertainty. Aleatory uncertainty is, which is inherent, it cannot be reduced, but it has, this has to be handled. Epistemic is do more testing, more experience and try to reduce it in the form of model. Uh, in the form of data, in the form of experience or in, in the form of any other compensating provision. So uh, epistemic uncertainty, yes, it can it can be uh, handled or reduced, but aleatory cannot be reduced. So the problem remains that we have, uh, only thing is uh, random or aleatory uncertainty is very uh, narrow uh, because you know when you, you design a system, uh, you try to reduce the uncertainty. but it is there that is okay so so uh, but then epistemic can have a wider uh, distribution so uh, by by handling the epi epistemic uncertainty and reducing it finally when uncertainty is not reducing that can be termed uh, as aleatory part that is remaining and it cannot be reduced further this is how we can have a look at the uncertainty level now present uncertainty data uncertainty model uncertainty uh, then uh, you know uh, uh, what assumptions we make that kind of uncertainty and these, uh, these assumptions have to be validated through a sensitivity analysis and then uh, uh, you know uh, operational un uncertainty because the life cycle loads uh, you, you may not have uh, full control on the uh, or you might not, have, might not have accounted all the loads it could be one time load or frequent loads so those kind of thing. and then future uncertainty now the phenomena which was remaining uh, for it, uh, in certain period of for to limited to certain period of time now we are trying to say uh, we want to do prognostics for 40 years that means future uncertainty it's a big component it may not remain valid so the answer is these modules based on periodic collection of data and thing they should be fine tuned but uh, all said and done future uncertainty cannot be captured let us accept the, that fact so uh, and, uh, and for that we will have to have some deterministic or operational uh, provisions or design provisions uh, uh, to address those areas. So this is how we can manage it actually. So, so um, we, are, we know that modeling uncertainty our model uh, whatever models we have studied in physics of failure uh, those models uh, whether it is electro migration or whether it is a um, I mean you can take um, uh, solder joint failure, fatty failure or uh, we might take uh, you know um, um, uh, electrons playing around and trying to reduce the, the thickness um, and then you know so so uh, those things will be there and understanding up to the material level it is an enormous task. We can do some few experiments uh, and pass it on uh, for the field thing and uh, further improvise on uh, field data and all. But then, yeah, uh, concern remains about that actually. So, and then degradation behavior. Degradation be and then uh, the biggest thing is uh, the surprise element that is critical correct length or correct size and then how frequently 
from there it will reach a catastrophic there is that is the uncertainty actually then uncertainty of representation but this has got a plus side also first of all let us accept that the probabilistic method provides a way of uh, presenting the uncertainty uh, in a upper bound and lower bound and that is a very elegant way of capturing uncertainty often there will be both part captured there the aleatory and uh, because we don't distinguish between aleatory and but we normally feel all the failures are happening because of um, um, because of randomness but that is not correct if we an, an, analyze many data uh, then we will go, go get down to the root cause and then you will find ki it was not a random failure it was an epistemic uh, ca root cause that was uh, that that came in only thing is uh, how much resources we we uh, spent on understanding the failure and if we are not putting the resources we will call it as a random failure but that is not correct random failure means it is truly truly related to material and in that very skewed domain actually so uh, normally there is a, sometimes people might say uh, even for epistemic thing elevatory uncertainty and all that so and then uh, so uh, uh, then other thing is uh, normally we communicate especially in uh, operational environment uh, many discussion we have data but data may not be a uh, uh, you know true representation of failure or it may be at one level it may be representation but uh, when you say some parameter was going up and down so we always say that, uh, it was increasing decreasing so linguistic communications are very important in operational uh, uh, ecosystem so for that the fuzzy fuzzy approach provides a way of characterizing uncertainty and then probabilistic interpretation bayesian approach uh, very well it uh, captures uh, i think fuzzy and uh, bayesian the subjectivity which is associated with the um, with the uncertainty and they capture it and uh, they have way of representing this uncertainty uh, though not the way it is probabilistic but then there is a way out we can capture the imprecise and um, uh, any linguistic variables also uh, like uh, we can treat them like a quantitative uh, component in in our uncertainty analysis now uncertainty quantification uh, uh, we do uh, why because we want to get upper bound uh, or and lower bound and then this same uncertainty when they are superimposed uh, in terms of the strength and stress uh, we get the probability of failure statement so uh, th this is the way it is uh, useful uh, that uncertainty analysis was useful in prediction are giving a signal that this is the overlapping area and now we have entered the pro probability of failure reason so that's why um, uncertainty's role is to keep the two distribution away or have a margin such that uh, they are not coming closer uh, bayesian method is one of the uh, another method for uh, quantification and then finally uh, rul actually so uh, uncertainty uh, uh, treatment uh, we can say um, often you know in any technology management appears with a little consequences a better op option because the research uh, uh, the research uh, it is very resource intensive and the plant has to be operated so management provides the uh, right uh, uh, right strategy uh, so uh, but then at any point of time uh, one question should should always be there can i reduce the uncertainty can i reduce this kind of thing in uh, laboratory environment and uh, how it impacts my rul uh, prediction uh, this type of things and finally these things they go in the uh, decision making process okay and the uh, uh, and and once you make the decision correct then you, uh, then we are increasing the uh, you know, safety or if they are wrong then we uh, we have to have risk mitigation measures uh, in that direction okay so this is a prognostic matrix uh, uh, even the phm standard uh, as a erection it provides this matrix and this is there is a, a good consensus that what should be the prognostics and health management uh, matrix uh, so uh, what we have is uh, this is the uh, precursor signal or degradation signal that we are monitoring 
this is a nominal value over here. So, uh, this signal, signal it has got an upper threshold and lower threshold. So, sensor data will have a uh, and the moment the sensor data goes out of the, the bound, the prognostic algorithm is initiated. Okay? And the, so, for prognostic algorithm, this is the TR, time for response. Okay? Uh, but then the up, uh, uh, upper failure threshold is over here, you can see. Here it is, it will fail, that is uh, assumed. So, well before that and you, you can also see here, the degradation is exponential turn it has taken. So, probably um, uh, we have to see when the decision has to be taken, whether it, is, it should be here or it should be there or you should go very close. Uh, only only a particular application will tell whether we have minute, we have a second or we have hours or we have days. So, uh, an appropriate frame and then management provisions. So, whether we have resources, uh, how long it will take. So, this particular matrix is very useful in real life and from the moment it is detected, then uh, it is called prognostic distance actually. Uh, so, that means it, here it was discovered, we had this much time available and uh, failure actually and then uh, uh, prognostics has detected is going out of bound uh, at over here. It prevailed here and it has gone over here. So, it got and then finally, we have PHO system detection time. And so, this is characterized over here. So, an upper bound and lower bound for this. Uh, um, I, what is the significance of uh, upper bound we know. Lower bound significance we will uh, so, many system they require lower bound, so many system they require uh, upper bound. Uh, the way we have this in distribution, lower bound and upper bound, uh, what is our concern actually? Strength or stress? So, that is what it is. And these are PHM sensors. So, this is a very elegant way and aim is to predict the life and remain safe. So, ultimate objective we should be able to meet. And then we plot the data, uh, we have this estimated figures are uh, given here, okay. Uh, that is called uh, maximum likelihood estimator. Why is maximum likelihood? And then the actual performance is here. So, these are the estimated value and then we have the per performance. So, so uh, this is the performance, okay. So, and finally, what we have is the failure threshold over here. Okay. The way we discussed in the previous slide. So, uh, we have various um, mean absolute error, then mean squared error, root mean squared error, all those things for prediction and we have here mean absolute error, uh, error and uh, uh, then we have this uh, EOP means end of prediction. So, uh, 1 upon 1 minus TP plus 1. Uh, summation from TP point P at uh, P, so this one, this will give me a mean absolute error estimate. And uh, this is again a regression analysis, how far we are going away from uh, the reference point and all. So, this is the prognostic matrix that we have discussed. Sometimes we can use mean square error also. Okay? There is another matrix for uh, giving error and then third one is uh, root mean square error. Uh, it is a choice of the analyst. Uh, like in one of our NNB prediction, we have used root mean square value. So, so there we found that is uh, there is that is performing well uh, for prediction of the input output pattern that we had over there. So one has to do the experiment and understand. It depends on the complexity of the problem. The, those complexity might include number of layers, might include number of input, number of uh, inputs, number of outputs. A number of hidden layers. So, those kind of things, a parametric study is required to do that actually. So, we have seen the source of uncertainty, treatment of uncertainty and prognostic matrix. Treatment and prognostic matrix, they form part of the management of. So, uncertainty prediction, uh, source of uncertainty prediction and its management. This is what we have discussed in this lecture. And then, if I have to see at the module level, what are our, uh, what are our uh, major uh, observation or limitation of prognostic methods. 
so there is no doubt in telling that the method, methodology has become uh, uh, matured and we have come to a level now it is a, but then we also get encouraged by saying that this uh, this phm techniques are being used aviation structural systems uh, you know in, in even in nuclear power plants there is a uh, up to condition monitoring we have the applications over there and for some if you talk about the uh, tripping the reactor uh, on on time uh, and with a sufficient safety margin then we have we have been tracking those parameters and a decision was taken uh, to trip the plant without any uh, risk conscious uh, risk uh, implications so uh, their uh, monitoring diagnostic level it is playing very well prognostic element has to be added uh, and that addition comes from the uh, condition monitoring of the system in service inspection of the system uh, they have more mathematical rich algorithm and we can have prognostics in place and then um, uh, damage model uncertainty which comes with the uh, damage model or even uh, mechanism failure mechanism whatever we have and the failure model that we have um, how accurately we have planned it and whether it is reflecting all the loads there is a uh, thing is to be um, seen so non availability of degradation model if i have a carbon steel pipeline uh, can i have a degradation model or i have to rest on the uh, catastrophic failure there will not be, but then the corrosion is one of the phenomena in carbon steel pipe so there can be a simple model or there only a material science person or a person who uh, work they can tell us you know uh, similarly let us say the stainless steel it doesn't corrode it doesn't corrode at least due to uh, the operational um, uh, fluid environment but then there are other sources of so um, this particular thing have to be seen in more detail if a prognostic element has to come in as a as a stable uh, um, component of a, any system okay uh, challenge to address uncertainty so um, uh, suppose if you are not able to capture the uncertainty to the extent that we 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 felt it uh, then probably a defense in uh, defense mechanism can be planned a conservative approach can be uh, used uh, an isolation automatic uh, system response can be created uh, and there is nothing to uh, get alarmed because of that but if we implement it then every day every minute we are learning something and we are making the prognostic algorithm more and the prognostic algorithm also is feeding us more in terms of additional liability additional uh, 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 safety so uh, it is a win win situation uh, and systems approach is required uh, the one view which emerges out from this talk is um, at component level is okay but then always there should be a thought or a field should develop where a system level prognostics uh, uh, is envisaged and it is implemented where uh, where the provisions are there for optimization um, you know and uh, parametric studies uh, so that we have a very balanced phm existing and uh, 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 maximizing the output